this video is going to look at Python's range function and if you were to look at Python's help you would see something like this and you would see you'd have the word range and then you'd have two brackets and within the brackets you can see it says start stop and in square brackets it has the word step now these start stop and step will be integers that we pass into the function and these are often called arguments or sometimes parameters if we look very carefully at this one here it's in square brackets which means this is optional you don't have to have this here if it's not there it's assumed it's going to be one now if we consider the particular range function what we can say is it's a versatile function used to create iterables yielding arithmetic progressions now the thing is what is an arithmetic progression well one two three four five zero one two three four five minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 2 4 6 8 all of those are examples of arithmetic progressions within Python you'll often see range used together with lists and for loops that we'll cover in the next video I like to think of functions through an example and here you can see I've got X is assigned range 0 10 and 1 are in the brackets and you can see they're appropriately separated by commas the 0 is the start the 10 is the stop and the 1 is the step a good way in my view to think of a function is schematically here you can see that I've got range appearing in a box and this is going to have an input and it's going to have an output so the range is, if you like, some kind of process, some, well, some kind of function. And what we're going to give it is some input. It will work with that input and it will produce an output. Now the inputs we're going to give it is the 0, which is the start, the 10, which is the stop, and the 1, which is the step. They go into the function and the function produces this arithmetic series here. If we look at the arithmetic series, we can see it started at 0 and that's because the start was a zero as you can see here we can then see it goes to one to two to three and that's because it's going up in steps of one because we passed it this one here which was the step and if you look here it ends at nine whereas here we can see we passed it ten now that is the stop value it means it stops before it gets to this ten consequently it only goes as far as the nine as we can see here now we can see that this function has produced this arithmetic progression here and of course we can see that it's been assigned to x so what in fact will happen now we'll have a variable created x and that will be bound to this arithmetic progression here so x now effectively has the arithmetic progression 0 1 2 all the way up to 9 as illustrated here let's now look at uh, another example here we can see I've got x is assigned the range and in brackets we've got 0, 10 and 2. So it's almost the same as the previous one we've just been looking at except I've replaced the 1 with this 2 here. So now the step is 2 whereas previously the step was 1. The same kind of a schematic approach is going to be used here. Here we can see we've got the function that will take input and will produce output. And of course the inputs are going to be the 0 which is the start, the 10 which is the stop and the 2 which is the step. They go into the function and what we get out is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Now the reason we get this arithmetic progression is because well we can see we start at 0 here which is what we passed. We passed the start value as being 0 and then you can see we go to 2 and then we go to 4 then we go to 6. Now the reason for this is the step was 2. So it's obvious if you go up in 2s you're going to go from 0 to 2 to 4 to 6 to 8. Now of course we can see here that we stop at 8. Now the reason we stop at 8 is if I add 2 to 8 we get 10. But of course the stop value was 10. And if you remember we don't go as far as the stop value. We have to stop before 10. And of course, because we're going up in twos, the stop before 10 in this case is 8. Whereas last time, the stop before 10 was 9, because we were going up in steps of 1. And of course, we can see that the function range was assigning to x. Consequently, we can say that x is actually bound to this 
arithmetic progression. Okay, now let's have a look at a, another example. On this occasion, we'll say let x be assigned the range 2, 10 and 3. We'll have a look at the schematic diagram again. And of course, on this occasion, we're going to be passing in the 2, which is the start, the 10, which is the stop, and on this occasion, the 3, which we can see is the step. That goes in to the range and we get the output of 2, 5 and 8. Now the reason we get 2 is quite simple. We started here by passing in 2 and that's the start value. We then go from 2 to 5, which obviously we add 3 to the 2 to give 5 because we can see the step is 3. And to go from the 5 to the 8, well, obviously we've added 3 to the 5 to give us the 8. So we should clearly be able to see why this arithmetic progression was produced. Of course, if we add 3 to 8, we get 11. That doesn't appear within this particular arithmetic progression here because the stop value was 10. So clearly 11 is beyond the stop value, so it doesn't appear. And of course, now what we can do, we have the variable x, and we can see that x is now bound to this arithmetic progression of 2, 5, 8. Let's consider the following example. Here we can see x is assigned range, and in brackets we have 10, 0, and minus 1. Now again, we need to consider this schematic diagram with the inputs and the outputs. And on this occasion, the input to the range function will be the 10, which is the start value, the 0, which is the stop value, and here you can see a minus 1. They go into the range, and this is what's produced. Now, you can see the difference here is that it counts down from 10 to 9 to 8 to 7. Now, the reason it's counting down is because the step, if we look here, is minus 1. So let's have a look at the 10. Well, that's here because the start value is 10. We then can see we go to 9 because we've got this step here which is minus 1. Then we go to 8 because of this minus 1 step. And then of course we go all the way down to 1 because we can see that the stop value is 0. Which means we don't go down as far as the 0. We actually go f as far as the 1. And of course this arithmetic progression is now actually bound to the variable x as you can see by this illustration here. Now let's have a look at a, another example. Here we can see x is assigned range, and in brackets we have the minus 4, minus 1, and 1. So the same approach again. What we'll now do, we'll pass the minus 4, which is the start value, the minus 1, which is the stop value, and a plus 1, that is in fact the step. And this is what we get at the output. We get the minus 4 because this is the start value. Then we go to minus 3. Now the reason we go to minus 3 is the step is plus 1. And of course, if you take minus 4 and add 1 to it, you get minus 3. And of course, if you then add 1 to the minus 3, you get minus 2. Now the reason we don't go any further than the minus 2 is that the stop value is minus 1. So this is the output from the range function for the input of minus 4, minus 1, and 1. And of course, this is now bound to the variable x, as we can see illustrated here. Let's now consider another example. Now here you can see we've got the range function, and in brackets we've got minus 4, minus 7, and a step of minus 1. And here we can see the schematic diagram again. And of course, we're sending in minus 4 as the start value, minus 7 as the stop, and minus 1 as the step. So what we get out is minus 4, minus 5, and minus 6. Now it's minus 4 because that's the start value. It then goes to minus 5 because we're stepping by minus 1. And of course, minus 4, minus 1 is minus 5. And we go to minus 6 because, of course, minus 5, minus 1, because minus 1 is the step, gives us minus 6. And then we can see we stop at minus 6 because the stop value is minus 7. And remember... With the stop value, you don't go to the stop value. So we can see that we only went as far as minus 6. And of course, this is now bound, as we can see here, to the variable x. Let's consider an example we looked at earlier in this video. And on this line, you can see I've chosen that example. And you can see here that we're assigning 2x the range... 
and in brackets we have these arguments here. Now this is the start, this is the stop, and this is the step. Now on the next line we are printing whatever is in X. So if I come to here now and run the module, what we will see is we will get this here. The outputs range 0, 10, 2. In fact, it is outputting precisely what we've got here. Can you see down here? Exactly the same. Now the thing is, where is the arithmetic progression? Well, we can say for certainty that the arithmetic progression is still bound to x. What we need to do, however, is alter the program slightly, as you can see here, and I'm going to let y equal, I'm going to type in list, and to list I'm going to pass as an argument x. And then on this line I'm going to take away the x, and I'm going to insert y, so we're going to print y. Then we come down here to run the module, it asks us to save, which we do, and then we get this output here. If I just move it down so we can view the program and the output, and you can see that this output here is exactly the same as what we predicted when we looked at this particular example earlier in the video. So in order for us to view what the arithmetic progression was, we had to convert it to a list, as you've seen here. Now we're going to have a look at lists in a later video, but before I finish this video, I just want to show you one thing here. Here I'm going to come up to the 10, and I'm going to change that to minus 1. So minus 1 is going now to be the stop value. And I'm going to come to here, and I'm going to run the program. It'll ask me to save. And when I run it, what we will get as the output is this here. Just two square brackets with nothing in it. Now why is that the case? Well, it's quite simple. It's because if we come up here, we can see that the start value was 0, and that the stop value was minus 1, and we were stepping in plus 2. So after 0, we would go to 2, but the stop value was minus 1. And in this case, the stop value is before the start value. So Python doesn't crash, it just says, oh, I'll give you an empty list, as you can see here. Now I can show you more examples of this. But what I would like you to do is to muck around with all of the examples I've shown and have a look at ones like this and see if you can create some empty lists with the way in which you use the range function. And just to repeat, we'll be looking at the list in later videos, but the next video is going to have a look at the for loop, and the for loop will make extensive use of the range function. That's why I wanted to cover it at this point in the playlist. So the next video is on the for loop check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python.